So that is it. We finally have a roof right there. I mean, you have to trust me because it's under that top, so you can't really see it. And when I say roof, I mean roof sheathing. Uh, the roofing is not there yet. So today we're going to talk, oh, we installed the sheathing safely with no incident whatsoever. I'll show you we got the 4 by 8 sheathing on top of that roof, I mean, which is pretty high. Uh, so anyway, and so much more, so let's get to it. So you want to build your own cabin either for yourself or to rent on Airbnb for an additional stream of income, which will help you create a lot more flexibility in your life. But you probably don't have a lot of building experience, which makes you feel very overwhelmed just thinking about all the steps it would take to build a cabin. Well, you're in luck. I am DIY cabin guy, structural engineer by day, and cabin builder in the making on the weekends. I'm doing everything I can to produce the most detailed step-by-step -step cabin building videos on YouTube to make it easy for you to understand what it takes so that you can confidently start planning for your cabin and building it successfully. The first step was to install a piece of blocking directly attached to a piece of floor sheathing which would actually mimic where the fascia board is going to go and this was going to make a great stopper for where the roof sheathing was to stop. I'm sure you remember the wall jacks I made to raise the walls. Well, that's exactly what we used to make a ramp that would be used to slide the sheathing up. So we used two pieces of 2x4 to hold the jacks together, and then some triangular piece of blocking that would be used as a stopper that would prevent the sheet from just falling back down. So I'm not gonna lie, and it took a little bit of getting used to it to make it work. But honestly, after a few trial and error, it worked like a charm, and we were able to use that consistently to move the sheathing up on the roof. Once the piece of sheathing was in place, we would just simply mark the location of the rafter beneath so we would know where to place our nails. So I'm using here two and a half inch nails with that nail gun and I'm spacing them at four inches on center. So big thank you to my dad that came and visited from France as well as my father-in-law which were both helping me that day uh, to move all that sheathing and honestly we work really fast and I don't know that I would have been able to do it all on my own. I'm under it. Well, I probably could have but it would have taken forever for sure. Because there's no blocking at the end of the panels, I'm using those Simpson clips which helps to structurally connect the panel together as well as creating an eighth of an inch spacing for all thermal expansion between the panels. So I know I mentioned safety in the beginning of the video and you're probably like, well, this doesn't look safe at all. Um, to be honest, on this side of the cabin, which is not that tall, it felt kind of okay being on the roof, but you'll see that we had to take special measure for the other side of the cabin, which is much higher from the ground. So definitely do not forget um, to do what I'm doing here, which is adding just a, a nail temporarily to create an eighth of an inch gap between the panels so they will be able to expand and contract with the temperature differences. Because the rafters were not always straight, I had to do some minor adjustment at the end of the panel so that it would sit the way I wanted it to sit on the rafter. C'est d'abord, touche pas la gâchette, t'enfonces. Non, 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 t'enfonces le truc. Et après, gâchette. And now, just like a pro. So here my dad was placing those clips. We were placing one at 16 inches on center, so pretty much each one per bay in between rafter. I mean, once again, having people is invaluable for this task because, believe me, trying to move a sheet of 4x8 by yourself is almost close to impossible, especially on top of a roof. Oh, curve. 
Well, there's a... To prevent this from happening again, we actually ended up using some 2x4 flat um, on top of the sheathing, and that would also help us walk around as well as hold our tools in place and prevent them from falling. Oh yes, that as well. Well, it looks like I'm getting pretty good at this. No, I swear I didn't speed this up. So here's another quick example of what not to do. <laughs> tu nous as tout fait tomber là. That was dangerous, but. So to go even faster, we just added a bunch of angles on the roof so that we could just take a lot of sheets up and just stack them up so that they would be ready to install. So now that you get the idea, let's just speed this up a little bit. So here are some close-ups so you can really appreciate the precision of our work. Well, I'm kidding, but we still did pretty good, huh? I mean, it's more for you to see where the nails went, the clip went, uh, before we go on with the other oh. side. Now this is where the serious stuff is starting. Because if you look at the cabin, on this side we're about 15 feet, yes, of the air, and probably about 18 all the way to the top. So I was not gonna mess with that height and so I got this kind of kit from Amazon that would allow me to kind of attach myself uh, to the roof and make sure I wouldn't fall from it. So here's the plate that will get attached to the roof uh, to pretty much hold your butt. And then there's a handle that slides on a rope and uh, that will lock itself as soon as you let the handle go. I'm gonna try to flip it over because it's completely, all the edges are sticking out. Careful. The same logic as before apply, it's exactly the same thing, but it goes much, 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 much slower because of being attached and not being able to have more people on the roof with me.
So the sheathing is done. Uh, you saw how we did it. I mean, hopefully that was pretty self-explanatory. Unfortunately, there's a few mistakes I made as usual. Um, I kind of rushed into installing that sheathing, meaning that I actually forgot to install some framing that were supposed to go beneath the sheathing. Uh, for example, here, as I'm showing you, you're not supposed to be able to stick your hand <laughs> through the top of the wall into the overhang. I was supposed to install blocking there, but now the sheathing is in place. It's going to be much more difficult. So uh, in the next episode, I'm going to try and fix this uh, because I need to. Otherwise, a lot of hair can pass through and it's not good. Uh, in addition, even if I install the roof sheathing and with my top on, I still have issues with the rain. As you can see here, the rain still goes through because there's spacing between the sheathing. So same, in the next episode, I'm looking to find a solution, potentially taping the sheathing so that I don't have any more problem with rain because I just can't take the rain anymore. So check out the next episode to kind of learn from those mistakes and hopefully that'll be valuable to you.